founders of the Romanticism movement uh, is Charles Baudelaire. I've been re reciting this poem for years, but it means a lot more to me now since I read, read Winters. And it's called Get Drunk. I don't see the cups going up, no, no? Okay. One should always be drunk. That's all that matters, the only question. Not to feel the horrible burden of time weighing on your shoulders and bowing you to the earth. You must get drunk without ceasing. But drunk with what? With wine, with poetry, or with virtue, as you please, but get drunk. And if sometimes you should happen to wake on the stairs of a palace, on the green grass of a ditch, in the bleak solitude of your own room, and you find your drunkenness is ebbing or has vanished, ask the wind, ask the wave, ask a star, a bird, or the clock, ask everything that flies, everything that moans, everything that flows, that sings, that speaks, ask them the time, and the wind, the star, the bird, and the clock will all reply, it's time to get drunk. If you are not to be the martyred slaves of time, be perpetually drunk with wine, poetry, or virtue as you please. Charles Baudelaire. Comments, anybody? Hand up. Oh, no, that way. Are we all ready to go out and get drunk on virtue or party politics or, okay. Um, music, okay. But, but, ah, good response. You know, at first this seems frivolous. If it feels good, do it. Live like you want to live. We heard that 50 years ago, for those of you young folks that were here 50 years ago. Um, of course, there's the other side of is it, the oppressive nature of mortality that he's asking us to be aware that we are all going to die, the horrible burden of time. But I think the most important aspect of this is the, the, uh, the relativism that's introduced not just into literature and art, but into behavior as well. And it is that relativism, that subjectivism, that going inward, that becomes modern poetry. And I'm going to break tradition here and, and do a, a couple of, I'm going to subject you to a couple of short, very short, a couple of them are one sentence poems, but modern poems to give you a sense of what I'm talking about, why they're, what the change has been. This one is published in 1913 by Ezra Pound, famous poem changed the whole business of, of Western literature. This movement had been going for a while, but, but uh, Ezra Pound writes, in a station of the metro. You ready? This is it, this is big stuff. The apparition of these faces in the crowd, petals on a wet black bow. Meter and rhyme are gone, details are gone accept an image, the subjectivity of the author. Ten years later, William Carlos Williams, an American, has bought into this European tradition and writes the red wheelbarrow. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. Are you moved there? Does that... But it, you see, this is the difference from the charge of the light brigade where you, I mean, there's their horse hoofs thundering and, and swords flashing in air. And now the, the artist is asking you, or maybe isn't asking you, the artist has made a picture and says, look at this picture and, and, and drink of it or don't because the artist really doesn't care. I think the other interesting thing is that this, those two poems are, have created a tradition. That's, those are fall into the category as imagism, the subgroup of poets that, that make these pictures. Um, and I, I found a, a 
February 22nd, 2018 poem in the New York Review. And uh, I want to read this one to you. This is a couple of sentences longer. It's entitled, A Cabbage White, which will be explained to you in a second here. Transported by a sudden gust of wind, not felt by anything except itself, a butterfly, a cabbage white, blows in the dizzard through my yard, considering, is this the place to rest, or this, or this? And in the process, fastens with a thread I cannot see, the drowsy flower heads each to the other and in turn to me, until a second gust of wind arrives and lifts it through my fence and out of sight which leaves the yard exactly as it was, except that now a sense of emptiness insists a moment of my life has been passed, which otherwise I would not like to miss. Subjectivity of the viewer. There's no change in the action other than this nice feeling that this, this author has, who is a male, uh, Andrew Motion. I always try to give credit to the people who do the, who do the work of the hard work of writing. But for my take on this, we have eradicated human volition from the purview of poetry. People aren't acting anymore, they are just recording. And uh, we are now uh, mere repositories of, of uh, stimuli coming in. And that's the reason that I go around and do this because I'm not such a fan of modern poetry. I like different stuff. And uh, it was almost as though uh, Ivor knew I was coming because he said, we really need a fourth category of poetry. He said, we need something called, for lack of a better word, moralism. Well, Ivor, I want, I know you're not with us anymore, but, uh, but I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm with you, um, and I'm going to read to you a, a poem of mine that uh, I call Ten Feet High. When we were kids, Leo was our hero. He would shoot baskets for hours in the alley behind his parents' garage. You'd hear his pounding dribble a block away. We'd get our ball and walk over and ask meekly if we could share the court. Leo always said yes, even though he was on his high school team and had to practice every day, even in the snow. We kids would play 21, shooting from set positions each progressively farther from the net. Leo would continue his solo drill, dribbling and shooting from all over the court. I don't think we knew back then that the rim of the net was exactly 10 feet off the ground. The one thing we did know was we wanted to strive to shoot and move just as well as Leo. Today, hoops are mounted on adjustable poles, an insidious egalitarianism posing as benevolence. It's symptomatic of our enervated culture that now everyone can dunk the ball and heroes are passe. Ten feet high, ladies and gentlemen. That was published uh, 12 years ago in a book called I'm Sober, But There's Still Hope. <laughs> Narrative verse with an attitude. Uh, pour a spilled wine bottle there on the table uh, by Peter J. Thomas. That's me. Anyway, thank you.